happened at the bond hearing. Um, I do think that the Zimmerman family was acting with constraints they thought they had. I don't think they believed that they had free access to that money. And I think that was evident by the way they used it and didn't use it. I think it was compelling evidence, quite honestly, that they didn't go out and just re use it to get them out that very day. But on the other hand, I think Judge Lester runs a very tight courtroom, as well he should. And he was frustrated because he doesn't think that they were being as straightforward and as honest as he thought they should. And, I, you know, the revocation of bond, I hope, is temporary. I hope that they will, um, he'll give us a day in court to explain George's behavior and look at all the circumstances, even the uh, discovery that's come out to date, and determining what he's going to do about letting him back out on bond. Mark, when do you expect to turn himself back? Within 48 hours? Within, I mean, are you talking to I haven't even tomorrow? spoken to him yet, so, but no. Did you read the motion? Uh, they talked, to, uh, apparently, the, the reported jailhouse conversation with them talking to Co about tens of thousands of dollars. And there's you know, a certain amount of collusion here between Mr. Zimmerman's wife and Mr. Zimmerman. If you consider talking about 10 and 20 and 155 as being code, then maybe you're accurate. Well, I, I've been involved, in yeah, nine dollars, right? And, and I, I've involved myself in cases where drug dealers talk and they talk about watermelons and things like that. When you talk about nine or ten, I'm not certain that that is so much of a code for 80 or 90 thousand dollars that that's legitimately trying to deceive anything. And again. If deception was their intent, why did they disclose it to me the first day that it was discussed? And why did he forward all of the money I asked him to forward, you know, the day we asked him to forward it? So, again, we'll vet that out with the judge when we have a hearing. So, we have a chance to tell George about this. And I'm so sorry? We have a chance to tell George that this is. Haven't happened. spoken to him yet. About to give him a call. Did he, did he know on the front end going into this hearing that this was a possibility? Sure. And so, what was his reaction to that? No reaction at all. To you wait until they see what the judge does, both now and at the next hearing. Was well, he well, watching this? I presume so, but I haven't spoken what, to him what yet. What do you think about the logistics of just getting a Becker? Is it a pretty simple process to bring a Becker? We'll accomplish it. You know, it's we are very concerned about safety still, and we'll maintain that concern, and we'll accomplish it. So how do you feel about George and Shelley Zimmerman being called liars? I understand the state's position on it. I disagree with it. That's what adversaries do. I think we'll get it figured out. I think, again, Judge Lester was concerned with whether or not they were being as straightforward as he wanted them to. And I think he wants them to come in person and explain that to him. And we'll certainly give them and the court that opportunity. How long do you think it'll take to get George back here? Are we talking hours? Are we talking at least a day? Uh, it sounds like I'm talking in code, but it's less than 48 hours because <laughs> that's what the judge gave us, and we're going to accomplish it. Are you still significantly concerned about his security? Yes. Have you received Absolutely. any threats? We've just, you know, it, there's sort of ongoing threats and concerns and, and complaints. I don't know where along the spectrum they become true threats, but, you know, we're dealing with them the way we want to. Law enforcement's involved as they need to be. And they're vetting through whatever they need to. They'll keep everyone as safe as we can. Can I shift a question? Because uh, the court, there was a discussion about. All right, that's Malcolm.